Welcome to the next part of the server upgrade project. You got two towers in front of you. So on the left, we have the new ED that we've been working on in the last video. No major changes since the last update to that. However, um, I did make one startling discovery. You'll notice that the red um, SAS cables are missing. That's because the SAS card is gone. That is not the same SAS card. I discovered, luckily I, I discovered before I did all the hard drive swapping and, and switching it over, that that card was not Unraid compatible. It only works for uh, standard RAID, it does not work for Unraid or Linux OS's. So I had to go get a new one. I got this one, um, came highly recommended um, from the community, found it on eBay for 40 bucks, and so that's got blue cables. So we'll be attaching those tonight. Um, I already got the card in the slot, so that would be, that will be pretty quick. Otherwise, the most for the most part, this is unchanged. The um, drive, it's ready to get drives put in. It's ready to get cages put in. On our right here, we have ED from the previous video series. So this is the old server. So um, what we're going to be taking is pretty straightforward. For Unraid, you got to take your flash drive, which I've got the Soul Stone right there. That's got the actual uh, boot um, information on it. Um, we're going to be taking the cooler with, so the cooler will come out. These three hard drives, these three hard drives, this hard drive, sorry, that's, a, that's an optical drive, this hard drive is what I meant to point at. And then on the back, uh, I don't have the back panel off yet, but there's uh, a couple SSDs on the back and uh, one up in the roof there. So uh, seven spinning disks and three SSDs. So once we've got all that hardware moved over, um, I'll make another update. I am going to have to sort out the power situation and the SAS cable situation. So the cable management in the back of this is going to get pretty ugly. Also, we got to attach all the drive cages, so I'll be putting those in. Um, I left this one here because I think it's uh, short enough to fit. But we're going to have five trays of hard drives here. And then we're going to move the optical adapter tray. We're going to pull it right out of this and pop it right into this. So um, our new configuration will be two drives in the cage here, this one on the floor five in these racks and then one so that'll be a total of uh nine i believe that'll be all nine one five six seven eight nine yeah so um we're, we're gonna have one drive that's brand new i got a western digital four terabyte just like these um uh, phil actually gave me that in return for putting his uh, movie collection on my plex server so felt like that was a fair trade he bought me a new hard drive so thanks phil um, so, uh, the other one that I'm kind of curious about what I can do with, I've got a spare 500 gig, uh, M2 SSD under here. And, um, what I think I want to do with that <clears throat> is replace one of the, the one terabyte that I'm using for VMs. And the reason for that is I'm only using like 23 gigs of it for VM hosting. So having a one terabyte SSD for that is really overkill. So, um, my hope is to use, if this all goes well and all the hard drives come up and everything is amazing, then what I'm going to try to do is, um, disconnect that Western Digital SSD, and then reconnect, uh, or not reconnect, but have it rebuild from the parity drive, so that this then becomes that SSD. So we'll essentially, um, we'll, we'll make the computer think that one's broken and make it repair it, and then once that happens, then we can take that uh, the existing one terabyte SSD and use that as a storage drive, uh, or whatever else I decide to do with it. It'll just it'll make my space set up a lot more efficient. But that's, like I said, that's after we do all this stuff. Right now, we're going to focus on getting the hardware moved over, and then we'll probably do another update after that before we uh, boot it back up. Um, I do have my monitor set up in the furnace room, so we'll be able to uh, get a live interface from that. We'll probably have to set up the BIOS on this motherboard appropriately to, to get it to boot correctly to the flash drive, but um, I'm prepared for that. So um, with that, let's, uh, let's start the time lapse and get these hard drives moved over.
Bummer. Okay, the assembly part is done. Uh, I think I've got everything hooked up. Uh, as you can see, uh, we did all the hard drives. So uh, we got one new hard drive here, one new hard drive here. These are the original three uh, Western Digitals from the old server. And then we got two of the Toshibas here, two of the Toshibas down in the basement. Um, I thought about trying to um, put the SSDs here, but it didn't work out with how the power cables went. So. What I decided to do instead was put the, I put the daisy chain for the, or the extension for the power um, further down so that I could put the three SSDs in the basement and then I could just have this one sticking out um, at the very end to go into this hard drive. As a result, we have a bunch of, like a bit of a rat's nest here going into this area. And also I hit my finger on that real bad. That hurt like hell. But uh, this looks pretty good, especially if you look at the way the old server was set up. I'm pretty happy with how the cables were run. Um, nice thing about this case, like I mentioned in the previous video, now we're going to have air blowing directly on the, all the drives, I guess except this one, but still, we're going to have a lot of great airflow for all the other drives. And um, this whole section of the case will no longer be obstructed. So we'll have some good airflow in here too. Um, I think everything's hooked up. All that's left to do is uh, turn it on and give it a try. So I'm going to go move it into the furnace room. I've got the monitor ready to go there. And uh, we're going to do a test boot, and we'll see what happens. Um, there's a possibility we might have to unplug it and check some wires. Uh, but hopefully she'll boot into uh, Unraid. Well, here we are in the furnace room, and we're ready for final deployment. All our drives were detected. There was one issue I had with one of the SSDs. I forgot that sometimes, uh, depending on your configuration, you need to have SATA port 2 unavailable because it'll turn off SATA port 2. So I just had to move that SSD up to SATA port uh, 6 up there and that took care of it. But everything else came up just fine. All the new drives were detected and all the old drives. And as you can see, we're booting into Unraid. This is just my test monitor. I don't normally have it here, but when I do anything with the server, I bring it over. Same thing with this keyboard and mouse. Those are just my test peripherals. They're not usually here. So um, yeah, so she's booting up. I already got the IP address switched over. Uh, now everything's done, ready to be uh, done on the software side. So I can go over to my computer now, and now that I got the IP address switched over, I can just log back in, start up the array, and, and uh, get her going. So um, this was a shorter series than before, but um, hope you enjoyed it. So now we've got a, a server running much more powerful hardware and be able to do a lot more stuff. Thanks for watching.